Hello, I'm Lisa Gidlow Moriarty, and this is my studio where I create room size painted labyrinths on canvas. Now labyrinths are tools that are thousands of years old, but they're experiencing a resurgence of interest in these days for a tool for calming, for de-stressing, for problem solving, just relaxing. And if you don't have time or space to walk a full-size labyrinth, you can do labyrinth walking by using smaller labyrinths that you trace with your fingers. In fact, the process of creating a labyrinth can be a spiritual process as well. And I'll show you how. So first, I'd like to demonstrate simple ways of making a classical style labyrinth. We do that with what we call a seed pattern. Now, a simple seed pattern begins with a plus sign and four dots, one in each of the quadrants. And there's a simple process of connecting the dots and the lines to make a labyrinth out of this seed pattern. This is like planting the seeds of the labyrinth. So if you start at the top of the cross and connect this line to the dot with a curving line, sort of like a hook, that's your first process step. Going over to the dot on the other side that wasn't used, we're going to connect that with a line over the first one to the next available dot or line on the opposite side. So this dot will go over the top and connect on that side of the cross. Going back to this side, we'll pick up this cross end and go over the top and connect it down to that dot on that side. And the last two elements are the dot and the line, and we'll connect them by going all the way around the top and up at the bottom. Now this we call a three-circuit classical labyrinth. We call it three circuits because if you follow the path, which is the white space between the lines, you will see that you will go around once, twice, three times before you reach the center. So three circuits. Now I'll show you how you would add to that to make an even larger labyrinth. Here you would begin with the same style of seed pattern, but instead of the dots right away, we will add these little L-shaped brackets in each one of the quadrants, then the dots. So this is the seed pattern for a seven circuit classical labyrinth. You use the same process beginning at the top and moving from one side to the next to connect each successive element, a dot or a line end. But in this one, you start at the top. The first connecting point is not a dot, but it is a line end for that top bracket. So we connect the top to there. We go back to this side and we connect to the dot, dot, to the line end, and keep moving around from one side to the next side. And one more time. And there you have a seven circuit classical labyrinth, which is the oldest known labyrinth design, 4,000 years old or more, and it's been found all over the world. Now, in addition to drawing labyrinths, which you could simply draw and use them with tracing your fingers, there's other ways that we can use this labyrinth design 
for our own spiritual use and our own creative use. So let's take a look at some things that we might be able to use for that. So here on my table, you can see a collection of items that could be used for building temporary finger labyrinths. There's pennies, there's buttons, there's seeds, beans, small stones, baubles, even Hershey Kisses. So let's take some buttons and I'll demonstrate how that you can use the creation of a labyrinth as a spiritual process. So if we take these buttons, now I've got quite a collection of colorful buttons and you might have some buttons from, from grandma's sewing kit that, that you'd like to use. Um, we'll take the buttons and draw by putting the buttons in, in a little line and make our seed pattern by drawing lines with the buttons or whatever item is you're using. And let's use some bigger buttons for the dots so it's easier to decide what we're connecting there. And then we'll use the buttons and simply, whoops, let's start at the top here, and simply draw our, our, our curving lines by placing the buttons next to each other. So we draw our lines with the buttons. Now mine is a very colorful collection of buttons. You might need some joy or delight in your day. So creating a labyrinth out of fun and colorful materials could add a bit of a smile to an otherwise dreary day. So consider the materials that you might want to use. Maybe you're worried about finances and you want to make your labyrinth out of that, that jar of pennies that you've got laying around. Or maybe you need some happiness, so finding something colorful like these buttons to add a smile to your day. One more trip around with these buttons and we will have completed our three circuit labyrinth. Now you can take longer time to put your labyrinth together. I'm moving rather quickly just so that we can demonstrate the process here. But if you want to make the creation of the labyrinth a meditation in itself. Take the time to select each, each piece that goes into it and place it purposefully where you want it to go. For a slow meditation process of creation. It's a bit of spirituality and art as you decide your combinations of colors and materials. So here is a three circuit labyrinth, colorful labyrinth made of buttons. You can simply look at the labyrinth and enjoy it, walk it with your eyes, admire it. It may sit around your table all day long if you, if you want it to be there or if you just want to take a few moments in the creation of the labyrinth, you might want to trace your fingers through the path. Even though it's only three circuits, I have found that three circuits work really nicely in some of my meditations where I may take my outward circle and say a prayer or a blessing for the world and then move inward to my own family. And then finally, a blessing for myself. 
and bringing those blessings and sending them outward as well as we trace the path back out from the center. And when you're finished with your labyrinth, the taking away of the labyrinth can be a part of the process as well. You could individually remove each one of those buttons or beans or whatever it is that you used and very slowly dismantle your labyrinth. Or you may desire to just pull it all together into one colorful pile and know that this pile of materials can again become a labyrinth whenever you'd like to use them. So thinking about the kinds of materials that you want to use, you can see my stones. You can find stones all over. You can do the same process with those. Half marbles fit nicely. Here's my pennies, my baubles, my seeds. And of course, the Hershey Kisses. You can see that I used some of those half marbles and I glued them onto a board that I had covered with colorful wrapping paper to create more of a permanent sort of piece. There's another one in the back that is yarn glued onto fabric. I can roll that up and put it away and then roll it out again when I'd like to use it. You can also draw the design onto paper like these examples here. One I've glued little googly eyes on um, to make a fun, fun labyrinth. You can use yarn on tag board or paper or other kinds of sequins or my, sorts of colorful materials. Whatever you decide to use, the labyrinth can be a meditative tool that can be with you as a temporary sort of um, tool, or you can make creation after creation and have an entire set of finger labyrinths that you use. So try different materials, try different designs, and see what appeals to you. And I hope that the labyrinth creation can be part of your meditation as well. Thank you.